Thank God for the wake up. Thank God for the wake up. Thank God for the wake up. God morning. Good morning. I'm your host, Louis Lopez, and we are talking cancer, my journey, my way. Welcome to the podcast. If you're new, uh, first time listening, um, again, my name is Louis Lopez, and I have stage four metastatic colorectal cancer. Um, it has moved to my liver. It has moved to my lymph nodes behind my abdomen, and there are some suspicious nodules in my lungs. Uh, mentally, at this particular point, I am mentally strong. I am physically strong. I am currently not on any medication. <clears throat> and um, some of it, a lot of it is by choice. Some of it is not. Um, due to my last uh, stint with stage three, I um, had almost passed away and things like that. So it kind of led me not to do it uh, right now. I'm not saying that I won't do it. I'm just saying that right, right now is just not the time. And plus, um, uh, I'm not eligible because of taking unemployment and disability the last time. Um, so it's just too short of a period uh, from what they tell me. Uh, the doctor says my chemo, my, my cancer is terminal. There's nothing for them to do. Um, and personally, I feel like, sounds crazy, but I feel like I am going to cure myself. Um, I'm doing a lot of things right now um, and trying a lot of things. A lot of things are, you know, homeopathic, um, different modalities as far as, you know, like acupuncture and things like that. Um my eating, I am completely 100% plant-based now. Um, I was about, <clears throat> let me see, I want to say since maybe March or something, I was about 90, 95, no, nah, maybe less, less because I was eating fish and stuff like that. So I was, I went from, I went from, Eating right for my blood type to now 100% plant based. Um, and soon here, probably starting Monday, um, I want to go on. I want to go on a fruit diet. <clears throat> probably want to try that for like a week. Not sure how long I'm supposed to do that, but I want to try that for like about a week. But I also want to tr start changing the way I eat and the time frames in which I eat. I want to start. Um, I want to start eating, having my first meal around noon, around the height of the sun. You know, um, I, I want to start changing what they call my circadian rhythm. Um, and that's, you know, not having my first meal to around noon. Drinking water, whatever. Um, and, and then have my last meal before, right before the sun goes down. So maybe a little bit, maybe somewhere close to six or something, I'm hoping. <clears throat> and get my body on a new uh, time frame of eating and things like that. So I'm going a, I'm to a work on that, you know, come Monday. And now that I'm 100% plant-based and I know that I could go hours without eating, um, I pretty much only eat one meal a day now anyway I mean I do have like some vegetables in the morning I have my cup of coffee in the morning stuff like that I think I'm gonna cut out the coffee for a little bit and just let the fruit and the nutrients and the anti and uh 
um, whatever that word is, <laughs> antioxidants, um, do its thing, you know, for me. So, you know, I'll probably do like a day of berries, a day of melons, you know, things like that. Um, but just, you know, stick to fruit. Um, see if I could do that for about a week and see how my body um, and my mind and mentality change. Now, I also have been to implemented some exercise, um, which is good because, you know, I feel really good exercising right now. <clears throat> you know, I come home and I go, I do a lot of um, uh, calisthenics type exercises. And, um, and I also take my daughter out to uh, practice for volleyball, you know, as she's trying to make the team. So, you know, we'll go do that and, you know, we'll work that out a little bit and, and kind of just uh, do the things that we need to do, um, you know, to practice her form and, and you know, really practice her serving, uh, trying to get that under control, uh, especially that overhand serve. Um, but, yeah, just trying to stay busy. Um, I think the biggest thing for me at this particular point is how strong my mentality is because, um If it wasn't, if it wasn't really for this podcast and this, this, this outlet that I have, I don't know how much the word cancer would be and I will talk about it. I do my best to not to talk about it. You know, no, I'm, actually, I won't, it's not even an effort. I, I can't even say that. It's just that I feel so strong and so good and I feel like. I feel like I could conquer the world at this particular point. I feel like um, my mentality, I'm just like super stoked about curing myself. I'm on a mission. This journey is, for me, is no joke. And I don't know how it is for you. But for me, I'm like super positive and... And super, I just feel like I can, I can overcome it. Uh, I believe that God is showing me a path to cure myself. You know, I speak to God in a while, but God hasn't spoken to me in a while. But I feel him. And the things that I'm asking him, they tend to become, they tend to show themselves. They show, you know, the light starts to shine um, down the yellow brick road. You know what I mean? Um, so life for me today, right now, feels good. Life for me right now feels good. And I believe I can beat cancer no matter what the doctor is telling me. So at this point, I'm doing everything within my power and my prayer to do so naturally homeopathically and that's just where I'm at and I'm going to tell you another thing the quality of my life is so much better than on chemo and the quality of life for me, honestly, that's what's important. I love making my kids laugh. I love going out and playing with them. I love being involved with them and things like that. I love seeing my wife smile. 
I love her not having to be in so much stress watching me um, just wither away on chemo. <clears throat> you know, these things, quality of life means a lot. You know, and as I keep my ears open and, and people send me things about um, possible new treatments and things like that, I do look and listen and and review it and and see, you know, what this is all about. And, and you know, when I talk to my doctor, I have my notes about, you know, a certain certain things, you know. But I did talk to my doctor about immunotherapy and things like that. He was like, no, you're, you're, you're too far off for that. You know, everything I'm... Um, Everything I brought up, you know, he was like, no, 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 no. So I don't, I don't live in the I can't zone or, you know, nah. And I don't live in feel sorry for me zone. You know, you know, I live on positive lane. I believe in God's way. And he is going to cure me. I claim it. I rebuke this disease. And this is not what's going to take me out. Today, you know, we've been on <clears throat> our, our daily mantras. And today's daily mantra reads, I am open to love in various forms. Now, I am open to love in various forms. Let's repeat that for a little bit. Okay, let that let kind of marinate. Close your eyes, please. Repeat after me. I am open to love in various forms. I am open to love in various forms. I'm open to love in in various forms. I am open to love in various forms. Now, what does that mean? I mean, I think everybody could interpret that differently, you know, right? Well, how do I interpret it? <clears throat> well, the first thing that I think about is self-love. You know, self always being first. You know, because self, you have to love yourself. You have to love all the different things about yourself. Your quirkiness, your sarcasm, your looks, your mind state, in order for you to even approach positivity. You have to be in love with yourself. If you're not in love with yourself, how do you even give love to someone else? Secondly, love in various forms means to me my love for God and how much I know he's been there for me and has had my back 100% along the way in this journey. This journey of life of lessons to reach a point of 
spirituality, mentality, growth. Analyzing and visualizing uh, who you are, and where you are going and what you will become and what you want to be ultimately. God's love for me is a form of love. And then I look at the love that I give out to other people. The respect I give them is out of love. You know, treating everybody with respect is a form of love. You know, I, I, I often say, you hear me say in my other podcasts, you know, I'm not perfect. I do lose it sometimes. I do get upset sometimes, you know, and things like that. <clears throat> and I apologize for that. But majority of the time, I'm leaning towards love. Love in various forms. I mean, we could get love from our animals. I don't have any pets. But people get so much love and care from animals. You know, it's an unconditional type of love. Get love from your kids. You know, and I'm not talking about you know, there could be people out there, the first thing they think about, hey, you get love in various forms, you know, you, and automatically you, you think about, you know, sexuality. You know, men and women and women, men and men and women and women. Nah. I, man, my mind don't even go there when I think about that mantra. You know? I think about the love that I receive from, you know, drinking my water. You know, I heard Cat Williams say something pretty profound the other day. <clears throat> you know, he said, you know, there's so many things that we can make. You know, we could take a seed from a lemon and plant it. And make a lemon tree. We could do that over and over and over again. Right? We could take, you know, juices from the lemon and make a margarita. We take the juices from a lemon and make a lemon meringue pie. You know, there's so many things you could do with different types of recipes. And we could make so many different things. We could make everything practically. But the one thing that we have the recipe for, we can't make. Water. We can't make water. We can't duplicate water. We can't clone water. So the love that water gives me it's very important. <clears throat> the love that fruit gives me. Food gives me. It's very important. The love that my kids and family give me. My friends give me. You know. So many different forms of love. You know, so think about that. I am open to love in various forms. You know, because, you know, say like we're talking about people. Well, not everybody has to love you in a, in a man-woman type of relationship. It's friendship love. 
somebody has your back type of love. You know, there's stranger love. You know, where people see you're in a situation and not the kindness and love from the, from their heart, they help you out because they feel for you. They have some sympathy, empathy for you. And they're willing to help. <clears throat> you know, I, um, I got I to gotta go fund me right now. And there's people that I don't know that have seen my story or heard about my story or listened to my podcast and have donated to my GoFundMe. Just because they're willing to help. That's love. You know, I appreciate it all. And I think that's one of the biggest things is being open to people wanting to care or love for you. You know. And enjoy that energy. Reciprocate the energy, the love. You know, let's just do what we can. You know, but yeah, so I wanted to kind of just, you know, wrap this up and say thank you. And for those that are listening and kind of, you know, just trying to know where I'm at here today, I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. I'm awake. I'm listening to the birds sing in the morning, having a cup of joe. And I'm calm. And I'm relaxed. And I'm not stressed about my cancer. Not at all. If I'm to be honest with you, cancer actually put me in a better place. Mentally, physically, nutritionally, spiritually. I'm in a better place at this particular point in my life than I probably have ever been. I'm still working on the physically part to get back to, you know, good old 21. But I feel great. No matter what the doctor says and no matter my outcome, mentally, mentally and spiritually, I feel great and I feel strong and I truly believe that I will be cancer. That's my time. I'm out. Peace, love, one.